Hey everybody, it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today is September 20th. We're coming up on the fall solstice and I just want to give you a little update about the hives. Today I'm just going to do a quickie. I'm just going to feed them. I've just finished feeding all of the nectar that I extracted earlier in the season. So now I'm going to be giving them two to one syrup so they can get all their stores for winter. And I want to show you what I'm going to be adding to the syrup to give them an extra boost. So in other news, I've installed these Apame bottom boards that were kindly sent to me by John. John, thank you so much. Now the reason why I decided to switch over is because I was combating small hive beetle in my number one hive over there. And John sent me two more bottom boards, so I thought, why not add them here? What I like about these bottom boards is that in the back, there's an extractable tray. And down below I have here, diatomaceous earth. And it acts like a screen bottom board, and the bees corral the small hive beetle, and they fall through the screen, and fall into the diatomaceous earth. Now let's see if we have a beetle. Earlier when I looked in here, I just installed this yesterday, I found one beetle. So, oh, here it is. And here's the dead beetle right there. So what happens is the diatomaceous earth, made of diatoms that come out of the sea, not only desiccate and dry the beetle out, it kind of slices into their exoskeleton. Anyways, there's a hive beetle. The larvae also fall in there as well and dry up and die. So that's a good thing. And it just slides right back into place right like that. Um, I also like that these include a built-in mouse guard, keeps mice out, and you can adjust the size of the opening, you can reduce or extend it by moving these little doors. The construction's all made of plastic, and unfortunately while I was unpacking this, I made a mistake and had to reinstall it, and I snapped part of this hinge over here. But I rewired it so the the ramp here would stay in place. So that's one of the cons of having plastic. This bottom board also comes with a couple screws in front and down below to attach it to your wood hive bodies. But as you can see here, this is my bee built hive, which I've liked, but these screws are in the way. So I'm gonna have to use some kind of strapping or something to attach this because the plastic is slippery and this kind of slides on the surface, so I don't really like that. So I'm gonna have to figure out some kind of way to attach this to this. Um, this is my bee built hive. So far, it's been pretty nice. So while I find this outer cover very handsome, one thing I don't like is the fact that I can't turn it over and place hive bodies on it when I get into the hive. So while hive cover like this, I would just place this upside down on the ground and then set the hive bodies right on top. So. That's one thing I don't like about this peak group, although it is very cute. Um, what else? So, there's yellow hive, blue hive, and green hive here. So, update on this, the girls are bringing in lots of pollen, although I'm not getting good pollen shot right now. It's about five o'clock in the evening, so things are slowing down. And this one, too, has a diatomaceous earth drawer. This is an example of what happens when the diatomaceous earth gets wet, kind of balls up. But this has been really great for combating small hive beetle on this hive. The first time I installed this, about an hour later, there were five beetles in there. I think I've finally gotten a leg up on the population of small hive beetle. I've been going in here every couple of days and checking my Swiffer pads. And the last time I found two ensnared and just one under the inner cover, as opposed to about two weeks ago when I was finding about 10 under the inner cover, which is a bit worrisome. So today what I'm going to do is feed these girls, and I want to show you my feeding setup here. This top, top hive body is empty, and it has a feeder on top, and I really like this feeder so far. Now what I like about it is that I don't have to wear any special equipment because the bees are contained. So what happens is there's a hole here. Through the inner cover, the bees can come up through this hole and then 
over the sides of this cup, which has little ladders, and then they can reach, in this case, which is spring nectar, and then drink, and they don't drown. This has been great. I love the fact that I can see the level of nectar or syrup. There's not much drowning, and I don't have to wear any protective gear. So if I were traveling, for example, and needed my hives to be fed, I could have a friend do it. And I also just like seeing the bees. So this is pretty low, and I'm going to replenish this now with 2 to 1 syrup because I am out of nectar. But yeah, this is the smaller size. I believe this holds about a half of a gallon. I also have a larger size, which I'll show you. So what I have down here, this is what I'm going to feed the bees in this round. This is 2 to 1 syrup, which means two portions of sugar to one portion of water. And this is a gallon. And John very kindly sent me this as well. This is amino acid concentrate. I'm supposed to add a half a cup or eight tablespoons to a gallon and some electrolytes, half a teaspoon, and some homemade honeybee healthy. And I'm going to add one tablespoon of that to this as well. So shake everything up really well. Half a cup is eight tablespoons. I'll also include the recipe that John used to make this baby healthy. Mm, it smells great. It smells just like the real deal. One tablespoon of that. And this is Vitamins and Electrolyte Plus. You just need a little amount of this. Half teaspoon. feeders. Okay. All right, so let me show you how I fill this up. Just open that up. Pour this in there. This syrup is two to one, is much thicker than what you would feed in the springtime. I'm going to give them about a half gallon of this and then give the other half to my other hive. This one feels a little bit light in terms of weight. The number three hive, the blue hive, seems pretty heavy. So I think they're pretty close to being set. We are having a fall flow this season, but this is just to give them a little extra bonus here. Put that on. I'm going to putting this hive buddy on top. This reduces the chance of, of robbing. I do have a ventilation hole on this end right here, but it's screened, so nobody can come in through the top entrance. Okay, there's that. So it's September 20th, it's pretty much fall. And protocol is feed the girls as much as possible so they have enough stores. Then I will do another mite test. I did a mite test and treatment in July and I will test and if needed treat for winter and then that's pretty much it I'm just gonna make sure that the girls have enough room or actually I'm gonna make sure the girls don't have too much room in their hives reduce them if they need be 
and then late 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 in the season probably December come January I'll wrap the hives with a bit of tar paper and then just leave them alone for a few months and then you know take a peek on them in spring and hopefully they will be alive Alrighty, so that's it. Thank you guys so much for joining me. John, thank you again for sending me all these bee treats. And I will see you in the next one. See ya. Bye.